And now, live from the living room, Timothy Janowski. Hello. 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 Nice. This is like a two-way street that's going on right now. Um, thank you guys for coming. Um, sure. Well, actually, I know you all personally, so I have a lot of dirt on all of you, which I would have held over your head passive-aggressively for the next five years had you not come, so... <laughs> In that case, you're welcome. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know me, because there are a couple of you that don't know me that well, um, I think I'd like to describe myself best as an 82-year-old man stuck in the body of a 42-year-old man-child with the birth certificate of a 22-year-old boy. <laughs> yeah, so I'm definitely an 82-year-old man because I love my dinner's early bird and at Red Lobster. <laughs> um, I get winded walking up any flight of stairs. Doesn't matter how many steps are in the flight, just looking at it makes me breathless. Um, and I'm also constantly exhausted, which is ridiculous because I'm vigorously unemployed. <laughs> you know about that. <laughs> The closest thing I have to a job right now is doing my laundry, and even that I don't do all the time. <laughs> um, I, you know, it's like I live in this constant state of having to do my laundry despite having just done my laundry. I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I have a lot of empathy for housewives now. It's like I put dirty clothes into the washing machine and new dirty clothes appear in my room instantaneously. You know, like there's some sort of weird glitch in the hamper matrix. Like, Ooh. It's spooky. <laughs> um, I'm a 42-year-old man-child, and I, I've kind of decided this because I sit on the couch a lot, I watch a lot of TV, and I think toilet humor is funny always. And you're allowed to judge me on that, but if you don't think toilet humor is funny, the next 20 minutes are going to be really excruciating for you. <laughs> and I know you all personally, so you can't leave. <laughs> so that sucks for you. <laughs> um, I'm also a 42-year-old man-child because I have rampant IBS. Which you would totally think is like an old people disease, but obviously it doesn't discriminate because here I am. <laughs> um, IBS, for those of you who don't know, stands for Irritable Bowel Syndrome, um, but I just like to call it the in-between shits. <laughs> <laughs> Such as in between every major meal of the day, I have to spend 30 minutes on the toilet praying my butthole doesn't fall off. <laughs> it's really fun. It's cute. It's a good look for me. Uh, I don't know if you know this, uh, but they now actually have apps where you can rate public toilets and your experience pooping in them. This is a real thing that exists. You can say how good the flush was. Do the locks work? Is the sink great? Do the lights go off because they're motion censored and you've been sitting there for too long? And now, and now you have to wave your arms around like a wacky, wavy, inflatable arm man, you know, outside a car dealership. <laughs> Just for the lights to come back so you can feel like a person again. Because for those few seconds, you disappeared into the abyss. <laughs> um, and this is a great invention for someone like me, because sometimes you're just out, right? You know, you, you get hit with your lunch poop, and you're like, where do I go? <laughs> um, but I'm also, um, I'm, I'm a bad pooper. Um, so let me explain what I mean by that. I'm, I get very nervous. I get stage fright when I have to poop, especially when there's a line and there's one stall. So I've come up with this little charade that I do when I'm online. So if I'm next in line and a person comes out, I wait a little bit. I hold the door and I wait until they're out of earshot and I go, oh my god, what happened in here? And then I shut the door. <laughs> because I want to prepare the person behind me for what I'm about to do. But I don't want to take any responsibility for my actions. So I do my do. And when I'm done, I open the door and I go, that was the worst experience of my entire life. It had to have been the lady in front of me. What did she eat? And then I make a quick escape. <laughs> it works every time. Um, I love playing the victim. It's a Sagittarius thing that I do. It's very quirky and fun. Um, the other reason I'm a 42-year-old man-child is because I'm prematurely balding. I'm not happy about that. I know it's a good look for some people, but I'm just like not ready to accept it. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's like, I, and you know what, genetics kind of really messed me up in that part because it's like I have hair on every part of my body that I don't need it, except for the one place that I do. It's like the hairs there were just like, peace out! <laughs> and they decided to take early retirement. So they're just like sitting on a lounge chair somewhere in Boca Raton waiting for the shuffleboard tournament to start. 
You know, and I hope they're having a good time because I'm not throwing any parties here. They did give me a good 22 years. But some bad marriages last longer than 22 years. So I feel like my hair could have really done the bare minimum by just like clinging to my scalp a little bit longer, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, if you can exist under the same roof and pretend to love someone for more than 22 years, you can really just stick it through, you know? <laughs> um, when you look up premature balding on WebMD, which I know you're not supposed to do, you're not supposed to look up anything on WebMD because you always end up spiraling and then for 48 hours you think you have cancer. <laughs> and I think I'm okay. I really do think I'm okay, but if I pass out, check WebMD. <laughs> um, it gives you a nice little bulletproof list of all the different reasons that you could possibly be losing your hair. Uh, one of them is genetics, so probably check. I come from a very long line of thin hair. Uh, another one is bad diet. Definitely check. You heard about Red Lobster earlier. <laughs> uh, the other one is poor sleep habits, and I'm 22, so obviously definitely check. And then the last one is undue stress and trauma. <laughs> and I, I, I kind of like to attribute it to the fact that I am constantly anxious, sometimes depressed, and always gay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel like that is, and there's nothing wrong with being any of those three things. Like, believe me, like, I, I like those things about myself now, but I do feel like they're the holy trinity of traits no parent would ever wish upon their child, if that makes sense. Unless you're my parents. <laughs> I just picture them on the Build a Baby widget on Amazon.com. You know how babies are made. Yeah. And so they did my outside, like a little avatar, and then they got to the personality trait section, and they were like, okay. Well, we can make him happy-go-lucky. Well, that would be annoying. Let's not do that. Okay, well, we can make him extroverted, but that won't build character. Uh, you know what? Let's just... But let's make him anxious, so he's worried about leaving the house. That's good. And then we'll just make him depressed, so he's a hard time leaving the house. And while we're at it, let's just make him gay, so he's afraid <laughs> to leave the house. That's good. <laughs> That'll ensure he never leaves us. <laughs> Two day shipping? All right! <laughs> and then I was Frankenstein out of organ donor parts in a warehouse in Seattle and dropped off on the front porch. <laughs> because that's what the stork is a front for. <laughs> Two things being delivered to your front porch seem like comparable stories. I find it really surprising when parents are shocked when their teenagers start lying to them really young. It's like, well, if you told Brandon at the age of five that his little brother was gonna arrive via big ass bird beak on the front stoop, then obviously he's gonna tell you he's going to the movies when really he's going to vape with his friends in the park. <laughs> it's like, because he saw the Miracle of Life video and there wasn't a single bird in it. I wouldn't know. Uh, I didn't see the Miracle of Life video in middle school health class. I religiously avoided that day. I did not want to see that much blood. It just like wasn't for me. Um, and you know what, I never really got the sex talk. Like, my parents never really sat me down to talk about the birds and the bees. Probably because at a young age they realized I preferred the birds and the birds, just like <laughs> spitting worms back and forth into <laughs> each other's mouths, you know? Like... <laughs> <laughs> you get the picture. <laughs> um, I think the closest thing, though, that I got to a sex talk, I was in elementary school, and I was following my mom around the house, you know, as the annoying youngest child does. And she wandered into my brother's room, and she opened up a drawer, and she found a Trojan. And she tried to hide it from me. And I said, you don't have to hide that from me. I know what that is. <laughs> and she said, oh yeah? What is it? And I said, that's a condiment. <laughs> yeah, a condiment. Like French's mustard or Heinz ketchup. Those aren't product placements. Those are simply things I thought were contraceptives. <laughs> she laughed so hard that she'd immediately call my grandmother and tell her what happened. And I still had no idea that I'd said anything wrong because I was in fifth grade, and I had the confidence of a much older man. <laughs> it wasn't until months later that I was in a Target clearance aisle and I saw a beat-up box of condoms that I even realized I'd made a mistake at all. It was terrible. <laughs> um, 
So you can probably guess that I had to defer to the internet at a very young age to kind of fill in all the gaps that I didn't get. So picture me like the Sherlock Holmes of Pornhub. I would put on my little houndstooth hat and I'd snap on my monocle and I'd tap the little mouse, because we, we had mice then, it was the early 2000s. And I would be ready, I'd take out my little notebook and I'd be like, okay, all right, so we're going to watch this 10 minute video, good, okay. They're kissing, that's good. Okay, we've seen that in a Katherine Heigl movie before. <laughs> okay, they're going, they're going to undress now, that makes sense. Okay, yep, we've seen that on General Hospital. <laughs> All right, and then he's going to take that and he's going to... Well, where is he even going to put that? <laughs> I don't, I just don't, it's, he's not going to put it there. No, it's not going to fit there. 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 It fits. <laughs> and I was traumatized. <laughs> and I wasn't traumatized for the reasons that you would expect. It's not like I, it's not like I didn't like it, um, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> it's not like I was afraid that it had hurt or someone had gotten injured. It was the simple fact that at the age of 13, I did not know that humans had buttholes. <laughs> I know. My thoughts exactly. <laughs> I genuinely did not know. And, and you're th I know you're thinking to yourself right now, Tim, how did you not know humans had buttholes? This is a good question. And I don't have a simple answer. But I will tell you that when I was potty training, I do remember my parents saying to me, Tim, don't forget to wipe your crack. And up until that point, my only reference for cracks were the things in the sidewalk that I was supposed to avoid as not to break my mother's back. <laughs> right? Cracks are thin lines, things can fall in, things can come out. So I just assumed, in between my butt cheeks, there was one straight line where poop exited. <laughs> and then I watched this video. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Tim, had you never seen an animal before? Dogs, cats, they don't have butt cheeks. They poop out of buttholes. At 13? No. <laughs> I was afraid of most animals at that time. I had a fish, different. I had a gerbil, wasn't really checking what was happening under the tail. I wasn't really concerned about, you know, the mechanics of their defecation at that time. And I didn't really watch a lot of National Geographic, so I wasn't getting, like, the real HD images that I needed. And so I'd really like to blame my ignorance on Walt Disney. But think about all the animated characters you loved when you were growing up, right? All those human-like animals that did human-like things but never wore pants. Donald Duck, no butthole. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh, no butthole. <laughs> Stitch, an extraterrestrial, who we'd assume might have multiple buttholes, <laughs> not one. <laughs> so you truly can't blame me for thinking that we had cracks, right? So right now, right here, if any of you are brave enough to take out your phone, I'm starting a movement. No one took out your phone. You're all right. <laughs> it's okay. I promise you, Tara, go for it. It's okay. It's okay. When you go home tonight, I want you to open your Twitter app, and I want you to tweet hashtag stop butthole erasure <laughs> so that young children don't need to grow up as ignorant as I did. I have Sarah McLaughlin on speed dial. She's already said she'd approve the, the song to go in the commercials. It's going to be great, everyone. Don't worry about it. I'm glad we unpacked that together. <laughs> no, but uh, obviously I, I kind of use the internet to kind of figure out what's being gay. Um, and now I love being gay. I'm very loud about it but in a quiet way, because <laughs> I'm an introvert, but I'm also a bitch. <laughs> and I love being gay mostly because it's kind of like being drunk all the time. It's kind of like having a built-in excuse for all of your bad behavior, you know? <laughs> like if you went to a party and you saw this girl making out with your boyfriend, you'd be like, what the hell, Brenda? That's my boyfriend. And she'd be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I'm drunk. And you'd be like, okay. 
you know, like the same thing would happen if you came home for Christmas and found me making out with your dad in your childhood bed. <laughs> like, what the hell, Tim? That's my dad. And I'd be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I'm gay. <laughs> and you'd be like, okay. <laughs> because if you said anything else, you'd be a homophobic piece of trash. You know, you see how that works? <laughs> Now, being gay isn't all pride parades and rainbows and the gap trying to shove crop tops down my throat. <laughs> um, it's also kind of annoying. And the reason it's annoying because when you're a gay man by the transitive property, you have to like other men. And I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, but men are the worst. Just like blanketly <laughs> the worst. If you looked up the worst in Webster's Dictionary, you'd see a picture of every man ever right next to a bag of Hint of Lime Tostitos. <laughs> because let's face it, there's no hint about them. They are just lime. They should be called lime chips. I've written Tostitos many times. They will not return my emails. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but I, I, that, that was a generalization. I, not all men are the worst. I am uh, in a long-term relationship. And I know what you're thinking. That robot has feelings. To which I'd say, sometimes, beep boop. <laughs> <laughs> that was my robot impression. <laughs> and nobody even clapped. <laughs> it's too late now, don't hit me. <laughs> no, no, he's great. He's, he's wonderful, he's creative, he's smart, he's funny, he's caring, he's 5'5". Five five. <laughs> Thank you for laughing, that's not a punchline. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not a problem. Uh, it wouldn't be a problem. It wouldn't be a problem if, in the right light, he didn't look like he were 14. <laughs> yeah, and you see me before you, and I've previously described myself as a 42-year-old man-child who's prematurely balding, so you can see where the disparity is there. <laughs> it's like, when we go out on a date, it kind of looks like the kooky uncle who's taking his nephew out for a fun day at the movies. <laughs> Which is totally fine. <laughs> and it's all fun and games until we start making out. <laughs> and then it's less fun. And the only game is me trying not to go to prison. <laughs> we went on a trip to Disney World recently, and I was kind of afraid to kiss him during the fireworks, you know, at the castle, because it's crowded. I was like, you know, these people are probably homophobic. <laughs> and I didn't want to offend anyone. And I was also afraid that there was going to be this uppity cast member on a hot walkie-talkie real quick, like, Pfft, we got a code Geppetto Pinocchio. We got a Geppetto <laughs> Pinocchio situation. Send in the troops. And then a bunch of stormtroopers were going to descend on my location and bring me to Disney Jam. <laughs> Which I can only assume is a very dark, very damp room where they play It's a Small World on a loop forever. <laughs> and the next morning I'd be allowed one visitor and one phone call, you know, on the two-way glass they show you in all those fun movies. And my boyfriend would show up wearing all black with this big floppy hat and a big pair of sunglasses and he'd sit down and I'd pick up the phone and I'd say, it's terrible in here. And he'd go, don't worry honey, we're gonna get you out. Like he's Amy Adams in some kind of prestige drama television show. And grief has somehow given him a southern drawl. <laughs> But you know what? I know my boyfriend is in it for the long haul, and I also know that he loves a good bit. So I would probably end up rotting in there for life. And the thing about that is that it's like kind of hard to trust people. You know, it's like exhausting learning how to trust other people. It's exhausting trying to find a job. It is exhausting doing my laundry in place of a job. Uh, it's exhausting waiting to get your table at Red Lobster. <laughs> it's exhausting being a queer person, and it's exhausting being any person in society right now. I don't know if you feel that. So I feel like we should all band together, right? And if we just wished hard enough, in our next life, we all might get to come back as Instagram famous dogs. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because they're universally adored. They're adorable to look at. They do little crossovers into each other's pictures where they scamper around and play together. It's wonderful. You know, they post one picture wearing only a sweater in a cafe. Millions of likes. I post one picture wearing only a sweater in a cafe. <laughs> I'm banned from Instagram for exposing myself. And then the cafe has to be shut down for sanitation reasons. Like, stop killing my vibe. No. But I do feel like if we're going to pilot this production, if I'm going to be the, 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 I should be the first person to go and be reincarnated as an Instagram famous dog. Because I'm already most of the way there, you know? Like, I'm extremely hairy. 
I eat and sleep constantly, and because of the IBS, I poop wherever and whenever I want to. <laughs> Speaking of which, I think I have to go change my underwear. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, guys. <laughs>